Guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another, of course, Arsenio Buck Show episode. Guys, this is the Speed of Trust, and I do apologize for that nice little ring, 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 ring. But you know what? Here we go. Low and high trust relationships. First, let's get into some of that fixed conditioning we have. Let's get into some of the things that people, of course, go through on a routine basis in their daily lives, whether it's at home with friends, at work. Uh, and just in general, you know, when it comes down to not trusting people. So here we go. Let's go over some of these. Quote. Now, of course, I took this from my man Stephen Covey's book, but you know what? We can all relate to this. I can't stand the politics at work. I feel sabotaged by my peers. It seems like everyone is out for himself or themselves. And you know what? They will do anything to get ahead. The next one is, I've really been burned in the past. How can I trust someone enough to have a real relationship? This one really sticks with me. You know what? I've been thinking this entire time living out here in Thailand. I've been saying, you know what? Thai women hate black men. Thai women hate black men. I've said that so many times, right? But is that the case? Well, that might be the case, but that has nothing to do. Those outer things have nothing to do with me and what I've been through in the past. I believe that I've actually held on to a fixed mindset dating back probably 10 years To where I got burned ridiculously twice. Nine years ago. Now the thing is, of course, those feelings are completely gone. I, (laughs) You know what I mean? But it's still holding me back because I'm so terrified of getting into another relationship. You know, for instance, I always believe that uh, when I went to Vietnam the first time and I realized how wonderful they were and I had some of the best friends ever. And I could totally see myself, of course, and I envision myself, you know, possibly even marrying a Vietnamese woman. Why? Because we're so we're 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 alike. Uh, we're very hard working. There's so many different, you know, traits that uh, that you know, in terms of you know, Vietnamese women and me, right? This is what I thought about the last couple of years. And of course, another one came in, and she is an unbelievable human being. And now I believe that this book has probably come at a perfect time for me to read and to figure out, okay, Arsenio, figure this out. And just as of yesterday, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I had one of my uh, students tell me, she was like, I told her about relationships because of course I was doing a wheel of life cycle because one lady that I just met randomly, she just came into my class while I was teaching a bus- some business English out there in the uh, CBD area of Bangkok. And it was the friends of, of course, the three individuals that I actually teach in I was like, so what time do you start work? Seven. What time do you finish work? Ten. She literally works for 15 hours. I'm like, where do you live? Ramintha. Ramintha is basically indicating that she lives an hour and a half. That is with traffic included away. She has no time for herself. Nothing. She brings work home on Saturday and Sunday. And then, of course, her being as beautiful as she is, she's single. Why do you think she's single? Because she has no time. Why do you think I'm single? Because I have no time. And the other girl, of course, 30 minutes after she left, and this is, of course, you know, this is about, you know, trust. You know, we'll, we'll get into that again. But you know what? This is just me holding on to things and me not dedicating some time to my own free time. And this is what my ultimate goal is for 2019, to only work probably three to four hours a day in terms of immediate income. But everything should be online and I should be making a lot of money online. And so, again, one of my students, she said, you know what? My relationship was very high, but now he doesn't have time for me. And I feel that it's going down. And then I realized, you know what? I believe that that was probably happening with all my relationships. I wasn't dedicating like real time and putting in real time to the things that could have been. I didn't put I didn't put 100% into those relationships. And now just reading into the foreword of this book, I'm starting to realize a lot of things about me. So let's keep getting into this. I work in an organization that's bogged down, okay? Now, this, of course, bogged down, uh, you know, you could just take it for what you like, you you know, whatever. But you know what? It's bogged down with bureaucracy, okay? It takes forever to get anything done. And this guy literally has to get the authorization to buy a pen. How about that? The older my children get, the less they listen to me. What can I do? Of course, a lot of parents out there are probably suffering from the same thing. I feel like my contributions at work are hardly ever recognized or valued. God damn it. That's how I felt. You know what? Every time I did wonderful, you know, with my examinate, uh, you know, teaching students at my last job, everything would just go over the head. Everybody would get real quiet. But once something happens, oh, your student said something just outlandishly stupendous. They would blow it up and they would threaten my job. 
So this is what happens when you're never recognized or valued. You lose so much trust, and especially you lose trust in people. Oh my God, so many different things, right? And again, these stories are probably going to come back so I can relate them to you and how you can relate it to your life and see where it went wrong. And that's the most important part to learn from these experiences. So I foolishly violated the trust of someone who was supremely important to me. If I could hit rewind and make all the, you know, make the decision differently, I would in a heartbeat, but I can't. Will I ever be able to rebuild the relationship? The other bullet point, I have to walk on eggshells at work. If I say what I really think, I'll get fired or at least made irrelevant. How about that? Could you imagine living in, you know, working at a workplace like that? Welcome to America. At least 50 million Americans are probably going through that in present day, including the ones that you think are happy on TV, but they're really not. And even the NBA, NFL players, if they say anything, they will get their contract terminated and they'll never get a job in the league again. Welcome to America. Or maybe just welcome to the world. Welcome to a world where you have no control. Can you imagine that? Oh, man, I just couldn't do it. Can't do it. And you know what? If someone has that that amount of power and says, oh, you know what? You know, I gave you this job. And, you know, that lady, she threatened me, you know, five years ago. I told you my first job. She's like, you know what? I gave you this job for good karma. Da, 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 da. She went there, berated me. And when I got home, I started applying for another job. I said, ain't nobody going to ain't nobody going to use or make me go on a guilt trip or anything like that. Make me feel bad about myself for whatever I've done. Get the fuck out of my face. And I ended up walking out of that place real easily. You know what I mean? I just got, oh my God, you will make a decision based on your own health if if a place is good enough for you. I still remember my my last school job out here in Thailand, 2014. Sorry for getting off track, but you know what? There was no trust there. You know, even at the, the, what is it, the Thai agency that said they would get me a visa. I kept contacting her. Are we going to get the visa? Are we going to get the visa? Are we going to get the visa? Oh, uh, well, there, just so many lies, so many empty lies. Then finally she said, hey, the school will not give you a visa. We have to give you a visa. And I'm like, um, fuck that. Uh, and then, of course, this school was one of the worst schools I've ever worked at in my life. Just horrible beyond belief. And so what ended up happening was – what ended up happening was – um. I ended up – oh my god, I got thrown off because of course somebody just came in. But I walked out. That was it. I remember there was one day I woke up one morning in the afternoon after I took a nap and I was actually enjoying the part-time job that turned into a full-time job that actually ended very, very poorly last year. Uh, Well, actually it ended perfectly last year or probably at the beginning of this year. It doesn't matter. But you know, I remember I woke up and I said that's enough. No more. I'm losing my voice. I'm always angry. My diet is poor. I'm not getting proper this, proper that. All of it was just bad beyond belief. Believe me. And you know what? I just made a decision. And I remember it was coming up on Monday, and I said, hey, I'm just going to leave anyways. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. I got my check, I think, that Wednesday or Thursday night, and then I literally changed my number. I changed everything. I was untraceable, and I disappeared from that place. I got my check, and I never came back. And people were trying to contact me. Hey, 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 hey. Blocked them. Blocked that number. Blocked that number. Blocked everything. Just changed everything in general. I shut down my Facebook for probably a couple of weeks, and that was it. You know, because I had to look out for my health. I felt like that place, if I had stayed there probably for an extra month, they would have kicked me out anyways. You know, so, again, when there's no trust and there's just empty lies, forget it. Forget it. And it's kind of like the empty lie. Oh, guess what? The place that I'm working at right now, the guy said that he would pay me this. He's not paying me that. He said he would do this with the work for me. He said it would be this price. He's lying. He's lying. He's lying. So that's why I'm like, yeah, fuck it. I really don't need it. You can kiss my ass. You know what? I'm going to make my own schedule. If you don't give me work, I'll go elsewhere. It doesn't matter. I'm going to win this game anyways. You see what I mean, guys? So... Again, it you know, it could go from bosses micromanaging you and you know, you know, scandals, corruption, violations in our society, ultimately, you know, taking away the trust that you can instill in other human beings and you not being able to trust anyone anymore, man. I got it, I understand, but you know what simply put, trust means confidence. The opposite of trust is distrust and suspicion. So what I want you guys to do, this is your nice little thing for today. And I'm gonna leave you at this. So I want you to think of uh, you know, I want you to think right now of someone who you have a high trust relationship with. It could be a boss, coworker, parent, sibling, best friend, whatever you want to call it. Think about it. I want you to get that person's image in your mind. 
Right when you get that person's image in your mind, I want you to think about it. What's it like? How does it feel? How well do you communicate with them? How quickly can you get things done? How much do you enjoy the relationship? Now, of course, I got about maybe four to five people right now. Another one from Myanmar just came into my life. Uh, he is my new, and I'm endorsing him as my graphic designer. His name is Chris. He is a phenom. Oh, my God. This guy is beyond diligent. I've never seen anyone work as quick as he it, He created an unbelievable look. Oh, my God. And you know what? He responds so quickly. So, of course, Luke and I, you know, with Motivational Mentors and all of us in the Grow Together Academy, we're just going to employ this guy. This guy is a good – He's making so much money in Myanmar. I'm so proud of him in general because out there in Myanmar, of course, a lot of you guys would think, oh, man, it's a place that there's no way you can make money. But this guy is actually hustling his ass off, and his hustle is unbelievable, and he could do everything, man, in terms of, like, making PDFs. Just amazing. So if I look at my most immediate one, of course I have Luke. Of course I have Selena. Of course I have Chris. Of course I have a few others, okay, Uh, even people at the gym who I'm building relationships with on a routine basis, boss. You know, the trainer is a magnificent individual. Uh, David, uh, Mark is at, you know, I mean, these guys are just wonderful, you know, but those are more acquaintances. They're not like my immediate folks that I have in my circle. But I'm going to go with Juwan. Juwan is my content writer who I met out there in April. Now, I had serious trust issues because I was like, when she first contacted me, she's like, I want to be your mentee. I want you to be my mentor. And I'm like, wow, why? And, you know, I was just so touched. I couldn't believe it. So when I finally met her at KLCC, and I was still like, okay, what does she want? I still don't know what her intent is. And, you know, she finally said, yeah, man, I want to work for you. I don't want to build my own thing with you. I want to work for you. I want to build that empire. And I said, deal. But, you know, it was still difficult to say, okay, can she do this? Can she do that? Should I give her my password for this and that? Now she has it all. I mean, it's perfectly fine. Unbelievably trusted. Malaysian. And you know what? Things get done so quick. The communication is unbelievable. Uh, just waking up and sending voice messages to her every day, it's just phenomenal. I absolutely adore the relationship, the working relationship that I have with Juwan. Now, you guys could probably think of something that is phenomenal too, but you know what? Now it's time to think about the ugly. Think of a person with whom you have a low trust relationship with. Again, it could be of all those people above. I'm talking about the coworker, the parent, sibling, best friend, whatever you want to call it. How does it feel, the communication? Does it flow quickly and freely? Or does it feel like landmines, quickly misunderstood? Do you enjoy the relationship or do you find it draining? Honestly. Like now me, of course, if I look at a low trust relationship, the people that I trusted significantly back in the day, of course, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, One of my college buddies, I trusted her with everything. She left one time, reappeared. Left another time, reappeared. Went through the last fallout last year. And like seven months later, while I was at the airport, I got a message. And yeah, I, I, th- I don't know where I was, but I got an email from her. And she's like, oh, so is this friendship really over? But the thing is, the damage has already been done. Again, when she walked out of my life, I went through probably the biggest and most significant transition phase in my life. I had no one to turn to. There was no mom. There's never been a mom. I could never let my mom back in my life because guess what? Those tr- Maybe I can. We're going to get through this book. We're going to see what happens. Maybe this might lighten some the things up in me too. But that's a low trust relationship. I can never trust her within my life anymore. I do not want to build. I'm not going to rebuild that relationship ever again. It will never be the same ever again. To, well, to be honest with you, you know, she's already, you know, she's going to be probably getting, um, I don't even know what that phrase is. Uh, but she'll be getting stitched. There you go. She'll probably be getting stitched within the next five years and super proud of her and whatnot. But, um, that's not going to happen anymore. You know, uh, a trust relationship, my best friend, you know, we had trust issues in the past, but again, we buried everything. We let bygones be bygones and we ended up trusting each other again. But think about it. If you guys have immediate relationships right now with a, you know, I'm talking about boyfriend, girlfriend, think about it. Are you walking on landmines? Are you quickly misunderstood? You get in arguments, you know, often, If that's it, there it is. These are some things, man. I want you to categorize these. Categorize them. High trust and low trust. See how many high trust you have. See how many low trust you have. And with the low trust, are they so draining to the point they're distracting you from everything? If they are, now you're aware and now you have a decision to make. 
So guys, we're going to go little by little in this book because this book is phenomenal. So thank you so much for tuning in to this podcast. I'm going to leave that with you today. And you know what? Feel free to get in contact with your boy. I'm your host, Arsenio, as usual, over and out.